Hey, it's Mike here, and today, The Plant Paradox Debunked. Dr. Stephen Gundry authored The Plant Paradox, which is a best-selling book, and for the last year has been making rounds, spreading some pretty ridiculous myths. And yeah, it has been a year, but he has released some things since then, which we're gonna talk about, so this is not just old news. Well, there are, of course, things I do agree with Dr. Gundry on. We're gonna go through some of his favorite myths and put them up against the science. Let's do it. So who is Stephen Gundry? Well, he has some impressive credentials. He's Yale-educated, he is a heart surgeon He's performed thousands of heart surgeries, and as he described in a story about himself, gave my thesis to my parents and went off to become a very famous heart surgeon and cardiologist. Just want to let you know, I'm a very famous cardiologist. Moving on. But when you lean so heavily on credentials, you tend to start making those claims without actually backing them up by science. We're gonna see a lot of those claims. But the reason I didn't go after Stephen Gundry earlier is because we do have one thing in common, and that is... You, somebody who eats a primarily plant-based diet. But when you probe a little bit deeper into his diet, you'll see not only that it's not as plant-based as he makes it out to be, but he enthusiastically promotes certain animal products and will leave you just completely afraid of a lot of plants. In the past, I've talked about a lot of people who tell you good news about your bad habits. He goes one step further and tells you great news about your bad habits. Here's one example in an interview with Tom Bilyeu. The yolk of the egg may be the most beneficial food that has ever been invented. Now, with a claim like that, telling people to eat more egg yolks, which are the single main source of cholesterol in the U.S. diet, you'd think he'd maybe back it up with some studies. No, nope, he doesn't even bother. And that's a pattern. And now for another pattern, how confusing he is. Listen to this. Well, I actually ask people to mainly throw the whites away. Uh, so we'll do a, a four egg omelet, but four of them are yolks and just use one white. And what is it in the whites or about the whites that make them problematic? It's, okay, it's animal protein. And let's look at another reason not to eat animal protein, sadly. He's saying throw the egg whites away because animal protein is bad. He even goes into mTOR and IGF-1 and animal protein, boosting those two, boosting risk of cancer. And I've previously outlined the studies connecting that, but come on. Egg yolks have animal protein. It's the paradox diet, where nothing makes sense. Now, I also have previous videos tackling the health washing of eggs, talking about the cholesterol ceiling. We're essentially throwing another match or another egg into the cholesterol fire. Doesn't really do that much, talking about sick populations, etc. but it's not a new claim to say that eggs are healthy. No, the new idea he's selling here is the plant paradox, that a lot of plants are actually unhealthy, and in particular, he's talking about one thing, and that is lectins. Here he is scaring a bunch of innocent people on the Hallmark Channel saying that plants use chemical warfare. So what they do is use chemical war warfare to make their predators think twice about eating them or their babies. So lectins are a self-defense mechanism for plants. You know what also is a self-defense mechanism? Antioxidants, yet those are super healthy for us. I don't think anybody's gonna argue against that point. Don't get me wrong, there are some plant defenses that are harmful. I mean, don't go eating a bunch of poison ivy, but there's definitely a ton of exaggeration and some reductionism here that we need to tackle. But what foods actually have lectins? Well, you've got beans and lentils and a ton of veggies, which are in the nightshade family, like peppers and tomatoes. This includes potatoes. Lectins are also in corn and soy and a bunch of other plant foods. In fact, Gundry has a no list, which includes all lentils, all fruit unless it is in season, and no zucchini. What did zucchini ever do to you? He also says no oats? What? And his yes list, of course, contains multiple carcinogens like prosciutto, as well as high fat dairy, a ton of processed, high saturated fat oils. It's clear from what he's telling you to actually eat and not eat that he's sort of repackaging a low carb diet here. He even has some keto bars on that yes list. Now there's no question that a really high level of lectins can be dangerous. And I do wanna add that even too much water can cause hyponatremia and kill you. But people usually talk about kidney beans in this situation because uncooked kidney beans have high levels of lectins and they can make people sick. However, merely cooking them to the point where they are soft, the point that we know them to be edible, gets rid of the lectins from this study, quote, cooking of beans completely destroyed the lectin activity. And here he is on the doctors admitting that you can just cook away the lectins from beans with a good response from plant-based doctor Joel Kahn. In my book, I ask people to eat beans as long as you put them in a pressure cooker. Dr. Gundry, are there pressure cookers in Sardinia? Are there pressure cookers in Okinawa? Are there pressure <laughs> cookers in Costa Rica Peninsula? They don't exist. Question. And they live long, healthy lives. It's not a fad diet. It's a bad fad diet because we're going to eat more butter. We're going to eat more eggs. And he's got 20 cheeses you can eat and almost no fruits you can eat. Sorry, that's not medicine. That is bad fad. 
but he's acting as if all of these plant foods have the same level of lectins as undercooked or raw kidney beans. This guy just has so many conflicting, confusing things. I mean, I'm impressed that he's able to hold that many paradoxes in his head, but I'm afraid he might crack and then we might find him on like a, an island somewhere in like 30 years. Lectin Larry and I have been talking. What's that, Lectin Larry? They said there would be no lectins on this island, but there are lectins everywhere. Coconuts? Coconuts are the best food on the planet, but coconut water, coconut water is the devil. And Gundry's main spiel is that lectins will give you leaky gut and make your body vulnerable to autoimmune diseases. Here he is. Lectins cause the wall of our gut to actually separate. And people have heard the term leaky gut. Yes, I'm actually about to support his point with more studies than I've ever seen him using the video from this study. Yes, you can poison rats with undercooked kidney bean lectins at a high amount and give them intestinal permeability issues, leaky gut. However, for obvious reasons, that's not practical to humans. And from this other study that found a ton of health benefits to eating these beans with lectins, such as decreased levels of inflammation. They also mentioned that the prebiotics in beans in general have been shown to help maintain intestinal barrier function in rats. So all the beans probably good at preventing leaky gut. But back to human beans. <laughs> but back to humans, beans appear to be possibly the most beneficial food for our health according to the research. For example, looking to the Hispanic paradox, they are pointed to as the reason that Hispanic Americans have better health outcomes despite lower access to health care and other factors that should be giving them bad health outcomes. It's the beans. And here's a fun one. One thing that you will never hear Dr. Gundry say is that there are plenty of studies showing that lectins are actually anti-cancer. Here's one study that concludes that dietary lectins from beans may be a good treatment to slow the progression of cancer. That is pretty crazy. And for the most important piece of information that would fry Gundry's brain from this study, legumes were found to be the most effective dietary predictor of elderly survival of any food that they looked at. For every 20 gram daily increase in legume consumption, they found an 8% decrease in death risk. This is the food that Gundry is telling you to be afraid of. Now, I'm not the first person to criticize Gundry on YouTube, but none of the videos I've seen have addressed his recent release of an abstract in the journal Circulation, which no, this is not a study which he would probably like people to believe. This is just an abstract of his presentation on some of his research he's been doing. First of all, he mentions cure in the title, which is pretty sketch, and his results are over the top of the 100 people with autoimmune diseases he had in the study. Almost all of them were healed. I think it'd be important to look to somebody else's response for this, in particular, Robert Eccles' response. He's the former president of the American Heart Association and professor at the University of Colorado. He spoke to Live Science, and he said, essentially that scientific presentations that are not yet peer-reviewed and published are inadequate evidence. Also, that Gundry study does not include a control group and it is impossible to make any conclusions based on limited data in a presented abstract. Not only is this not a published study, he doesn't report any p-values or anything like that. And he changed so many things. He added antioxidants and prebiotics and all of these other things, what actually got the result. And how do we know these results are real? After all, right there, it says that this is an abstract about the pant paradox protocol. Hello, patient number five. We're gonna do step one, which is uh, take your pants off. Oh, not again, I'm leaving. Wait, wait. Where are you going? You can't leave. No, you need you need to check off right here that your autoimmune disease was cured. Uh, no way. Oh, you don't want to? Well, I'm gonna tell your husband that you took your pants off. But I never took my pants yeah, off. Yeah, that's the pant paradox part. Ew. And that's why you check your spelling. Anyway, moving on. It seems like he's trying to attack every single healthy food. He even, of course, goes after whole grains. Whole grains are one of those wonderful myths that got perpetrated by a few individuals. Then why are they associated with positive health outcomes in basically every single study out there? Like this study that found a stepwise positive connection between lower mortality and whole grain consumption. It's the paradox, it's, it's the opposite of science. Or how about this study that he somehow missed in his own field, heart disease, that those who ate the most whole grains had just 67% the heart disease risk that those who ate the least amount had. He does get some stuff right, like how there's a connection between autoimmune diseases such as type one diabetes and cow's milk. Moving on, he also realizes that free range chicken is BS. Feed them organic corn and soybeans and not let them out of the warehouse except open a door for five minutes every 24 hours and the chicken has the potential to go outside. 
And that is the current government definition of organic free range chicken. Now for what is possibly my favorite piece of hyperbole that came out of his mouth. Okay, so uh, the only purpose of food is to get olive oil into your mouth. Um, <laughs> there are three long lived societies in the blue zones that use a liter of olive oil per week. In order to not repeat part one and part two of my oil videos, you can go and watch those if you're interested in why olive oil is not a health food. But for now, I just wanna say that just because the blue zones are eating one type of food doesn't mean that it's healthy. For example, everyone got on the wine train and said, oh, blue zones drink wine, so drink wine. Olive oil is not a health food, it's a significant source of saturated fat, and studies like this one have shown that it's capable of compromising your artery function, and it is 100% fat. This is not the type of food you wanna be recommending in a society where obesity is a major problem. Now, at one point he actually even mentioned NEU5GC, which is in red meat and leads to inflammation, talking about how red meat isn't healthy. And then, and then he goes on and, and says this. So if you're gonna have a steak, please pour it on your meat, as they do in Italy. Sorry, man, these mixed messages are next level. Now, I tend to avoid reading things directly from Wikipedia, even though this study in the journal Nature found that it was nearly as accurate as the Encyclopedia Britannica, but this one's just kind of funny. Quote, He's best known for his claims that lectins, a type of plant protein found in numerous foods, cause inflammation resulting in many modern diseases. Scientists have classified the claims as pseudoscience, he sells supplements that he claims protect or reverse the damaging effects. Yes, he sells supplements, which in case you didn't realize, were actually ironically being advertised on the side of that live science article earlier. But let's take a look at these supplements. Here is a $240 supplement that blocks sugar from being absorbed. What? Here's an $80 lectin shield supplement that prevents lectins from being absorbed because he told you not to eat lectins and you ate them anyway, I guess. Inspired by Gundry, I'm starting my own supplement. It's called BS Shield. It prevents Dr. Gundry's BS from entering your system. Free hundred dollars, free. In conclusion, it's more important to listen to actual research and studies and the science instead of just somebody's credentials. And just because something is a paradox doesn't mean that it's true. In addition, he sends a ton of mixed messages about eating animal products. For example, eggs are Jesus, but animal protein is bad and red meat is dangerous, but pour olive oil all over your steak. This is just not good medicine. And yes, well, lectin levels can be too high in inedible foods. There's no evidence to show that lectins at the level they are in a bunch of the foods we eat are actually doing a lot of damage. So my concern here is that a bunch of people that probably have chronic diseases or obesity are gonna go and follow Stephen Gundry's advice, eat less of the plant foods that they really need like beans and vegetables, pile on the eggs, and it's probably not gonna do them very good. Now, I don't want to be absolutist and say that nobody is ever going to have any problems with their immune system from lectins. I mean, we have a lot of plant proteins that people are allergic to and so forth, but this has been super blown out of proportion. There's a ton of fear mongering around this, and that probably doesn't apply to the average person. Finally, it appears he's making a lot of money off of very gimmicky supplements and definitely a lot of money off making people afraid of lectins. So that's something to be suspicious about. And finally, really, you should just join me in my pant paradox protocol and just take your pants off. I'm just kidding, I'm still wearing my pants, which aren't even that color. And that's, that's the paradox. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think down below about uh, Stephen Gundry and his plant paradox, and I'll see you in the next video. Did I mention lectins? Lectins are bad, but I now know the real enemy. Pectin. Oh, what's your name? Pectin Pete? Nice to meet you. I'm on the pant paradox protocol. I'm on the pant paradox protocol.